Hey, what's going on guys? Comic Games here. Finally, I'm ready to demonstrate the final version of this OpenCV-based chess bot to play on whatever, on whatever website using the optical piece recognition system. So if you're interested, without further ado, let's actually start our demonstration. <music> Okay, so uh, a few essential things to consider. So it's currently tuned to play on Lead Chess. You can tune it to play on whatever uh, on whatever website you want. So I would be playing standard chess and uh, versus uh, another stockfish to avoid any sort of cheating. Obviously, cheating is possible, but I highly discourage you guys to go for that sort of a cheating. Okay, and here I want to open the terminal in the current working directory and before we start writing the code I just want to uh, mention one important thing so if we just uh, if we just if we just open the folder here and go into the piece recognition folder and uh, this is this this is how the screenshot should look like when you would actually run the script so the idea is to have the top left uh, corner, corner of the board being located exactly at this at the certain position it's the global globally predefined constant everywhere in the source code so if you if you have a different location or the board within height you need to refine the constants for your own uh, your own setup so this is absolutely essential so this is going to be working only for my setup and again like mostly this is done to avoid cheating because for those who just want to cheat it's incredibly too complicated to set up all the stuff and to make it work but for programmers and for those interested to know how actually how to how to, how to make use of OpenCV for visual uh, object detection purposes this is going to be really interesting so j just to give you an idea so I now need to uh, make exactly the same screenshot so the board position is located right over in here to make it run properly and this is this this is how we go so here it is and so first I'll just run the script to play with white and the black pieces I'm not going to be waiting until the entire game ends because it's kind of a bit too long but uh, just as a proof of concept and then we'll quickly walk through, through the source code uh, we'll walk through the remaining parts of code that wasn't covered yet in this tutorial series so i just want to say python chess python 3 chessbot.py and play with white pieces and here we go so here are my hands now it's scanning the board to detect all the pieces then it uh, it creates the FEN strain out of the board and passes this to the engine. Currently, it's playing stock. It's uh, stockfish playing uh, with uh, 0 0.01 uh, time control, so it's like light and fast one. That hand's not really that strong, but that can be that can be altered as well. But the idea is that as soon as the uh, engine returns the back best move right over in here, this. Uh, best move uh, coordinate uh, this uh, best move squares like e4 and e5 and so on are being converted to the specific co global coordinates on a chessboard and then uh, we do mimic the click event to click on the source square and then to click on the target square and that's how the chess move is made so this is how it works as you can see it's playing absolutely automatically by moving the mouse and by just to mimic the click events Okay, so I hope this is clear. It would be playing, it would definitely win uh, because this Stockfish level 1 is incredibly uh, weak uh, and uh, on my side it's kind of like a full-blown Stockfish. But anyway, uh, another thing I, I would like to demonstrate is how to play with, how to play with the black pieces. So it has, uh, it has uh, a bit of a limitation. So to make sure it would be working properly, we need to swap the board because it can locate uh, images, uh, piece images only in this uh, in this board state. So that's quite important. But it would be moving like uh, it would be playing black, but black should be always on top to to make it work. So now I can simply say uh, Python three chess bot pi and play with the black pieces, and here we go. 
So my hands are here. And again, like scanning the board, then converting the board image to FEN string, passing to the engine using Python chess library, make and move. This is kind of it. So this is sort of it. And I don't know how about you guys, but I personally really enjoy uh, watching how this how this is working. I don't really care about the results and the chess plane strength, but the possibility, the ability to manipulate a chessboard image and turn it into an FEN string and then to, and then convert this best move response uh, squares to the global coordinates on the screen to mimic this mouse move and mouse click events. For me personally, it's really it's really interesting to to have a look, and I personally really enjoy how how this works. Okay, so this is it from my from my side. Uh, if you just let it play for quite a bit of time, it would end up just mating and then exit from the script. So nothing special really. So, uh, oh yeah, just <laughs> sorry, just forgot the one of the main things. So let's have a look at the source code, the rest of the source code that uh, we didn't yet cover. So we ended up with locations to FEN, right? Okay, so the next thing, so uh, the uh, this function search, what it does, it uses Python chess library to create a board instance and initialize this with the FEN that we did obtain by calling this function, location to FEN. So this function, as you remember from the previous video, was converting the global coordinates of the pieces to uh, assorted uh, to uh, the FEN string. So quite pretty interesting routine to set list. And then we uh, create, uh, we, we open the engine sub process. It works, uh, it's not parallel, it's just like, uh, it's a, it, it's in a blocking, mo blocking mo mode, but it doesn't matter really here. So here we use Stockfish, if you want, you want to use BBC. Bear in mind that this is the Linux version. If you want to run it for Windows, you need to have the Windows Engine Binary Executables, which I don't have, but you can you, you, you can download one for BBC. I did provide that, and obviously for Stockfish as well. Then we extract the best move, convert it into the strain, uh, quit from the Engine process, and return the best move. And this best move is then uh, converted to the coordinates. So before anything else, here is the routine that runs on a script start. So it what it does, it converts, uh, it, it is it, it associates uh, the coordinates like e4, e2, like a1, etc., uh, with a certain uh, with a certain uh, coordinates, uh, global coordinates, uh, piece positions on a screen. So we have a variable up here uh which is called get square yeah we don't we no longer need this one it just experiments so get square so yeah and the, the uh, and the square to coordinates is the array that would actually uh, add the index of a certain square so let's say a8 has the index of zero so to move the, so to move the mouse pointer to a8 we need to move it to the coordinates stored at the index zero of square to coordinates array. And now uh, we need to uh, initialize this array. So this would be like 46, uh, 60, sorry, 64 elements. Uh, every element is responsible for a certain square and every, and every element is the center coordinates of a given cell, uh, global coordinates of the cell, like this one, this one, this one, this one, and for every single square in particular. So, here is how we go in. So looping up. So th these are this uh, the initial uh, top left corner of of the chessboard. Uh, again, the global constants. Uh, so loop over rows, columns, uh, creating the square. Yeah, we don't need this one anymore. And here we do append. Uh, so what we do? We take. Uh, x plus cell size divided by two and cell for the y coordinate. So this this is how we d d determine the center of the certain square, and this coordinate size are stored as the tuple, as the tuple into the square to coordinates. And then to reference this sort of an array, we do use uh, we do use this uh, get square dot index to convert. So the best move is like e two e four. 
uh, and th this is the string so let's say uh, best move zero best mo best move one is uh, this, this is e this is two this is e this is four for instance right so we just get an index for e2 and then we index our square root coordinates by e2 to get the coordinates of e2 and as far as we get the co coordinates for e2 and for e4 we just move the mouse pointer to the from square say to e2 then we click to select the piece then we move to the e4 then we click to move to make the actual move and just wait for some time uh, just to wait until the opponent responds that's kind of it so again like uh, the full cycle is following so it's uh, infinite loop it ends when there are no more legal moves so it just automatically ex exits in that case so making a screenshot uh, running the piece recognition uh, the, the position recognition routine here then extracting the FEN from the piece location coordinates then uh, getting the best move uh, by sourcing by fitting the FEN string to the search routine to uh, pass it to the engine to calculate to get the best move and printing the best move then uh, extracting the from square and the to square from the best move like this are the strings and then just uh, well, well sorry converting those strings like e2 to the like x y coordinates center corner coordinates of the corresponding square target square same thing so converting like e4 to the uh, x and y coordinates of the e4 square global coordinates okay so then we just click on the from square uh, m moving the mouse to the from square Mimic the click event, move the mouse to the target score, mimic the click event, the move is made on board, wait for, th for three seconds, we're done. This is it from my side guys, so I hope you've liked this, this, this tutorial, feel free to play around with this sort of um, automated chess bot based on visual piece recognition. Again, like it's not intended for cheating, so it would be incredibly hard to cheat if you try, just trust me. But for programmers, just for uh, general kind of like knowledge general experiments this might be really interesting so this is it from my side thanks for watching until the next time and take care